Good evening, family, and welcome to our show. That is Deb Chanel's 48th World featuring the Family Affair. Getting this story I'm going to be talking about, narrating through the entire video. So make sure you enjoy the clips and definitely comment down in the comment section after the video has been streamed through from the beginning through the end or to the end i should say child i don't know what bravo doing i don't know if it's true or not but we just have to go with it so this story is going to be talking about pretty much rehashing some old stuff and trying to figure out why some stuff didn't take place and why Cynthia Bailey didn't take up for herself more during season 12. And then Kenya make a fool out of her every chance she got to do so. And then gonna come back and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I mean, that's her whole storyline. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I was just playing. You know, and my thing is, Cynthia, when do you call your so-called friend out and say, stop hurting my feelings? Okay, if you want to dog somebody out, if you want to make lightly of someone's demeanor or character, play with somebody else, okay? Leave my name out of it. Because you know how I felt about it. You know how I'm feeling about it. And even though, Cynthia, you may say you feeling the same thing others may feel, you never come to the defense for yourself. You always wait to Candy want to show up and show out on your half, on your behalf. Or you got Tanya or Portia coming, trying to take up for you too. So baby, what we need is for you, if you're going to be a part of season 13, uh, as a friend of the show or as a full-time peach holder, who knows? But if you're going to be, let's come with it for season 13. Okay, baby? Let's come with it for season 13. But anyway, we get the story from Atlanta Black Star. And her name is Chantel Rusher. She's out there bringing us salacious stories, giving us her perspective, her viewpoint on an article that she presented to the forum. Okay? Or social media, I should say. Because it was trending. We get a title as Kenya is not her real friend. People drag Kenya Moore for how she treated Cynthia Bailey during Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12. Okay. My punt, my perspective, Kenya had nobody to uh, pick on. She knows she couldn't come pick on Candy because Candy going to come back with a clap back. Okay. She's going to clap, clap, clap back on her loudly. Because we don't seen her do it all of season 12. Okay. When uh, she want to pick fun at Miss Cynthia Bailey. Okay. Then um, we see her try to go bats with Nene. But what people don't understand, and I see it so clearly, Kenya wants Nene to be her friend. And in a sense, she wants to take Nene's spot. So what better way? You know, because I'm like, Nene tried to give you an olive branch and try to understand you, Kenya, and try to give you some advice when y'all were in Greece. But you shut her down every which way you could. So when a person is trying to be humble and they know they used to, uh, they're used to arguing with you. They used to getting into it with you all the time, and no holds barred. Y'all going for the juggler. All fair and love is war when y'all are going at each other. But you gonna not take the olive branch, toot your nose up, Nene, and turn your back. So Nene had to come back with the quit back and say, okay, so you're not gonna play fair. I'm not gonna play fair. And that's how you got that. Pretty much a buffalo, You're, you know, is she having a buffalo? And that child thing got misconstrued, misunderstood, and it just broke and went nowhere but left, okay? And then when Nene trying to be nice, you know, trying to talk to you about, okay, I ain't going to drag you too much, but, you know, this is a story we got to talk about, honey. You in the blogs, you this, that, and the third. Mark don't want you. At least that's what the blogs are showing us. What are your feelings on it, baby? But if you don't want to talk about it, we can come talk about it in private or whatever. But we might gather dirt on you, intel that we can use later on down the road. So I can understand you not want to cozy up with Nene. But you could have had that moment on TV where y'all tried to make amends with each other. And you tried to sit there and let her talk and try to understand her viewpoints. But you, you shut her down. So Nene got her feelings hurt. So she went back for your juggler. So what better way to just say, I'm glad. Mark left you to put that type of emotion and that 
with a knife in your heart like you did it to her when she was trying to talk to you and you put a knife in her heart okay so it's just playback or she never would have said it and that's just common sense and, and most people not all people but most people would attack you if they felt that you attacked them regardless of what fair play they was trying to play prior it was back at status quo or at least that's how I saw it when y'all got to fussing and greasing and, and Nina tried to you know be humble with you in a sense you know make it a little dramatic effect that she understood what you've been going through this that and the third and you shut her down and then shit went left and then he just went back for your your throat pretty much okay and what better uh news to try to destroy somebody and make them feel less of than is to use that the social media got on you allegedly about your failed marriage with mark okay but anyway uh going into the article it said, uh, Kenya Moore of the Real Housewives of Atlanta came under fire from fans for nearly destroying her friendship with Cynthia Bailey during season 12. Honey, she annihilated, this is my sidebar, she annihilated the friendship. She walked on it like it was nothing um, but how you stomp grapes in the vineyard to try to make wine. That's what she was doing all over y'all friendship. Forget that friendship contract that you settled with NeNe and up burning uh, setting fire to it and then having to have to create another one but yeah Kenya Moore is no different from Nene Leakes and you kissing Kenya's ass just like you kiss Nene's ass there's no difference there just her name is named Kenya and Nene name is Nene but they both have taken advantage of you so I don't understand why you could take up for Kenya as much as you did in season 12 but you gave Nene no no life Ralph, no lifeline okay but i think it has a lot to do with uh your association with mike and mike didn't care for nene he really didn't care for the housewives at all he even said it was trash uh the only classy person that was on there was you cynthia and he kind of like canned it but the rest of them he just saw as trash okay so what did that tell you but anyway moving on uh back to the article it said, while the ladies seem to have moved past their drama, the final reunion episode reminded fans that their friendship was not always peaches and cream. Okay, peaches and cream. Da -da 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 -da. Something. Wasn't that 112, y'all? You know what I mean? You gotta have some peaches and cream. Okay, uh, I just had to throw that in now. But then it goes back to the article we have uh, the next paragraph reading part three of the real housewives of atlanta reunion aired on sunday may 24 one of the biggest storylines during the episode was moore's complex relationship with bailey during part one of the special portia williams expressed that she believed moore was a fake friend to bailey and we all assumed that especially when she went in on that um they were in Greece, and she went. They went to dinner up in the sky. I forgot what the um, little eatery was called, but they were having din din up in the sky. And Candy was being a little shady too, because she know Nene didn't like heights. Now, why would you go to a restaurant, restaurant when you know you're gonna be in the, eating up in the clouds? Okay, when you know one of the housewives don't like that thing. But Nene just went on and did what she had to do. Cause I guess she said, I need the fam. I need my money. So let me go on and do this horrendous thing. Hopefully it won't kill me. Okay. But we will be, you know, getting somebody back once I find out who planned this trip of an event for us to partake of. But anyway, um, Portia Williams was up there trying to take up for Cynthia. And uh, Candy Birds had to come in and save her from Kenya yet again. Okay. Uh, so it became, it comes to be a pattern we're seeing with Kenya and me personally. You can have one in incident with me, shame on you. The second incident I let you have, shame on me. It ain't gonna be no third incident, okay? Cause it might play out for your favor, and then I might have to get in your ass literally, okay? So once a person has showed you, and then they showed you twice, it's time for you to wake up and smell the roses, the coffee see the writing on the wall ain't no sister going to phase three and if we did the same when it came to our men or our woman 
we wouldn't be in the situation we are in too with going from relationship to relationship to relationship okay but it just is what it is that's just my sidebar we're moving back to the article it says um williams revealed that she has text messages evidence that prove more was talking about bailey behind her back the founder of pampered by portion hints that more came for bailey all season and we of course we saw uh what they were talking about on the reunion and uh it was more so you know eva got in uh, that mix somehow and kenya misconstrued stuff like she always does and embellished a little bit more than what it really needs to be and it just got lost in the sauce if you must but it wasn't really no telltale, hardcore, concrete talks about. It just, you know, when you're mad at somebody, y'all ain't friends, or y'all don't fell out for a while, you go telling bedroom pillow secrets, you know what I'm saying? And it just, you know, just go haywire and left. And, you know, it's just a lot of messy mess. So, we understood it, but yet, we really was no real concrete information we was looking for because it was more so a conversation, a verbal conversation, a listening part where somebody was listening to the other person talk and then and you know it was going against Eva in a sense where she felt Cynthia shouldn't have been friends with Eva or she should have checked Eva from the door when she started talking about her but you know one thing we have to understand we don't have to check people we can definitely just get up and say you know I like this person if you don't like them okay let's just not have a conversation about them okay and then we won't have no misunderstanding because if you continue to talk about them and you know they're my friend I'm just gonna walk out and leave and that's all you got to do you don't have to listen you don't have to have no banter with them you ain't got to do no back and forth just get the fuck up and leave you know what I'm saying so oops I'm sorry I got another engagement you know use that lie works for me all the time but anyway uh moving on from that situation it says uh towards the beginning of the season candy burris told more that bailey's fiance mike hill was going to propose to bailey as a surprise at the event more ruined the su surprise by telling bailey that she believed Hill was going to propose to her that night you remember can you say she had a premonition <laughs> <laughs> Something just told her. Now, like, damn, that Candy just told you what crystal ball you had to look through. She just told you she felt via telephone that she felt Mike was going to drop the big question for Cynthia to partake of. Now, what gave Candy the right to say, I think Mike is going to propose to you? Now, what if it didn't happen? I, you know, and Candy did go check her friend, like, girl. Uh, she didn't say you stupid, but she's like, why would you do that? But in Candy's confessional, she did call her a bitch, okay? She said, you an evil bitch. <laughs> and I was there for it. Ooh, I'm like, okay, Candy, I'm on your choo-choo train on that segment or what you said. Because Kenya was dead ass wrong. I don't care how twirls want to go and spin it all. No, Kenya looked for the weakest person to pick on and then she trampled them. And it happened to have been Cynthia Bailey. And same thing with Nene. She looks for the weakest person she can trample on as well. So, a birds of a feather flock together, okay? One monkey do it. Two monkeys do it, okay? And I could go on and on with the adages. But Kenya Moore and Nene Lee's are the same. They're just two facial different people. And they have a tendency on playing on Cynthia because she is the weaker, weaker vessel in the group. All right? The rest of the women going to clap back. They're going to talk. They're going to fuss. They're going to drag you for filth. But I call you, uh, you know, getting somebody together. That's what I call it. Um bringing them down one section at a time we start at the head and we work down to the feet that's the old way of saying things okay but anyway going back to the article it said another time more stirred up drama with the ba uh, bailey wine cellar owner was doing their cash trip in greece while the ladies were on the vacation more implied to bailey that she should not be selling wine because she was not an expert in making wine at the end of the episode more apologized to her friend for insulting her business during the reunion more shared that she was teasing bailey suggesting that she took the joke too far kenya more takes all of her jokes or all of her interactions with cynthia as a joke or seemingly wanting to just really film with her so she does what she needs to do and 
again, again, Cynthia is the casualty that has to play its part. Wow, can you make a fool out of her? So, my sidebar, I'm just hoping if Cynthia is going to come back, she don't accept any wrongdoings from Kenya. Just like Kenya don't try to go out the candy viciously and torment her as much as she can about what knowledge she have or what knowledge she don't have. I mean, anything she said, she definitely said it out of Candy's face, especially that old mess she was talking about. Candy, uh, Candy don't need to work no more. She has everything. Why is she continuing to have now all these different jobs? Hey, she didn't tell Candy that to her face, now did she? No, she said that in her confessionals, all right? So I'm like, if Candy even saw that, she need to take note. But if she don't, hey, it just is what it is. You could be another Cynthia lineup for Kenya to try to provoke and try to make a fool out of. But, you know, Candy, you like saying you like to drag people. But we ain't seen no dragging take place since you've been on the show. Okay? Going back to the article, it says more. Also ambushed Tanya Sam, a friend of the show, by bringing Shania White to lunch with Sam and the other ladies. White, who owns a bakery in Atlanta, claimed that Sam's fiancé, Paul Judd, a judge, was flirting with her at the time. Moore blamed Bailey for setting up the confrontation between White and Sam. Okay, again, throwing Cynthia under the bus. And like Candy did say on his last uh, reunion, well, Cynthia, you know, your hands are not clean either because you sit up there and invited the cookie lady after you knew what had transpired or what she had told y'all about what Tanya Sam's boyfriend slash fiance slash husband, not on paper, however you want to see it, uh, union with Paul Judd, that she was wrong for even asking the cookie lady to come into the circle. So, of course, you know, Cynthia tried to play her way through, but Candid was, you know, calling it a spade a spade, you know, calling her friend out. No, Cynthia, that was just as bad, okay? So I'm like, damn, is Candid trying to ride solo now? She thinks she feels comfortable now not being in allies, okay? She thinks she can hold her own on Real Housewives of Atlanta and give us some tea. I don't know, honey. I don't know, but I'm just saying... She did try to tell Cynthia during the reunion, you were just as bad, baby. You were just as bad. But I'm going to give you a little reprieve. Um, I'm going to give you a little reprieve there. I'm not going to fault you, but I'm going to call a spade a spade. So it seems like, in my perception, that Cynthia was a little perturbed with Candy with trying to call her out. Okay, because um, Cynthia do like to be seen as the victim. Uh, but she's not victimless you see what i'm saying she create drama and stir up trouble too we just want her to stand in her shit but going back to the article it says prior to the lunch bailey invited white to moore's event to confront sam bailey shared at the reunion that she was not serious about white's invitation claiming that she would have warned sam before even ambushing her really really girl so what happened because <laughs> when you saw shania Walk through that door with them cookies. You should have stopped and said, what the hell are you doing here? Sidebar, let me speak to you for a moment. And then you could have pleaded your case while we was watching it all go down with you trying to get Shania straight and, you know, letting it be known that you really didn't have anything to do with it. But that didn't happen. You sat down, you sat and ate them cookies, and you watched the whole document play right in front of you. Then when everything had got itself resolved to a certain degree because we it wasn't finished for us but that's just as much as the taping and editing they wanted to show us on that particular episode you caught yourself trying to get the hell out of there i'm like no a hit dog will holler and a hit dog will run okay making you just as an accessory to the crime cynthia so no you didn't get out scot-free so thank you candy birds for calling a spade a spade and bringing the truth to the forefront Okay, but going back to the article, said Bailey revealed during the final um, reunion episode that she forgave Moore for how she treated her during the season. However, she expressed that she called Moore out on her behavior in private instead of on camera. Well, Cynthia, that's good, baby. Uh, but when some things are done in public, you need to handle them in public. Not just for our edification that you do get Kenya more straight, but just to set the tone for others who may try and come for you uh, with new characters being introduced or new people being introduced to the platform. So they won't think you're a pushover, you're a passover. Hell, even Mal gets you together. You know what I'm saying? 
So I don't know, Cynthia. You need to do a little bit more correcting on camera as you do off camera. Because she ain't paying you no respect. She ain't giving you no respect. But she's apologizing to you when we know that's a half empty apology. Just to keep in your good graces. But a person that love and care for you, they would never come after you in the first place. to have a storyline or have something to be taped on. Okay? But it is, it is what it is. Going back to the article, it says, Some Real Housewives fans drag more for her excuses during the reunion. And I was one of them. There's no excuse. If you like a friend, that friend is down for you, you're down for them. There's no reason why you have to make a fool out of them to have some taping on a particular episode and you being shown correcting Cynthia again and again and again. Okay? But uh, that is not... Uh, a friendship statement that's more of wanting to be all up in the sauce and want to be seen okay as mark ha had uh, allegedly called you being an attention-seeking whore okay but anyway we had one fan come in the comment section uh during this article and they wrote kenya provokes people period one day someone is going to have money long enough to dig in that ass and pull out the wig she only wears occasionally another fan wrote cynthia 53 years old and still can't see that kenya is not her real friend continuing on another commenter wrote it's kind of scary that kenya really sees no wrong in anything she does to certain people now i'm down now with king piggy um she has a twitter account this was going on twitter that they got these comments sections and plaster them in this into their article and i was just saying the same thing girl when will you give it up and give her the business cynthia read her for filth you tried to do nene that way so it's time for you to get on kenya's ass in front of us okay Another, and that was just my sidebar. Another commenter wrote, Cynthia doesn't try to embarrass Kenya in front of other people. Yet, Kenya constantly embarrasses Cynthia in front of the world. But they can't see why people think the friendship is fake. All right? Um, and that's a good point, Monica. Very good point. She, she embarrasses Kenya in front of other people. But Kenya embarrasses her in front of the world. Child, please. Okay. Another commenter wrote, Porsche is all of us when Kenya is talking. And another commenter wrote, the season 12 finale. No, that's just it for those comments. And, and ending the article, it says the season 12 finale has officially wrapped, but it's unclear when the ladies will begin to film season 13. According to TMZ, Yovana Manaplastur, a former friend of Nene Leakes, will return as a full-time cast member next season. Now, that's another video I got to get out tonight for you all. That's why I kind of started a little early tonight. Uh, just to break two out on y'all so y'all can have something to think about. Uh, inform y'all opinions and perceptions. And put them comments down so I can talk back with you uh, regarding them. Because that's bullshit. We have been hollering, Phaedra, Phaedra, Phaedra. We ain't saying nothing about no Yovana, Yovana, Yovana. Because what she just going to give us? More lies on top of lies. A little truth in all those lies. She tried to um, have a forge a relationship with Nene to take the alliance down, which the alliance was Kenya, Candy, and um, Cynthia Bailey. Are you kidding me? So, yeah, we got to get into that video. And um, bring some bring some clarity from my perspective, so I can bring it to my family, and I can uh, interact with you all, and see if we can come and have a stable uh, conversation about this, a meeting of the minds. But sometimes we are gonna agree to disagree. Everybody ain't gonna agree with me, and I don't expect you to. But just like I said, let me have my opinion, like I let y'all have y'all's. Okay. But anyway, that's all I have for this particular video about Kenya just running Cynthia into the ground every time she gets a chance. Okay, every time she gets a chance. But then, you know, Mike does the same thing too. <laughs> when he said, uh, Cynthia likes to drink wine. And he implied, you know, little low key shade. She don't know what she's doing. But she likes to drink wine. People like to drink wine. So I guess it's a win-win match. On both sides. But that's all I had. Guys, y'all get down in the comments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about subject matter for tonight. 
and I will see y'all next video. But before I go, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and comment. All right. Good night.